After the crude is separated from the solvent, the product should look like the following. If the purity is high, there will be crystals forming. Setup for column chromatography as shown. Make sure that there are no clogs in the stopcock by draining nonpolar hexane through the column. The elution rate should be adjusted to one drop per second. If this rate cannot be achieved, the stopcock is most likely clogged and polar acetone is necessary to clear it. If acetone is used, make sure to rinse the column again with hexane. Once the column is completely dry, you are ready to add the silica gel into the column. Caution! Do not breathe any of the silica gel dust during its handling, as it can be harmful to your lungs. To make the slurry, first pour the silica from the column into a beaker and have a separate beaker with hexane ready. Obtain a third beaker to mix the hexane and the adsorbent. Always add the adsorbent into the solvent, never vice versa, or the solvated adsorbent can cause the solvent to heat up and boil. Once the slurry is stirred thoroughly, pour it back into the column using a funnel. You may also add a layer of sand into the column before adding the slurry. This can keep the adsorbent from leaking and further prevent any potential clogs caused by undissolved substances. The remaining slurry residue in the beaker can be rinsed with hexane and poured into the column as well. Open the stopcock to observe the elution rate again. Tap the side of the column to pack the gel tightly and evenly. Remember, the column must not run dry after this point, so make sure to close the stopcock once the hexane approaches the top layer of the gel. If the slurry is too thick, add more hexane. If the elution rate of one drop per second cannot be achieved, connect the tubing to the air valve and place the other side of the tubing over the column to increase the elution rate. Use hexane to rinse the sand and gel off of the walls of the column. To avoid disrupting the even packing of the gel, add the solvent from the side of the wall with a pipette. Remember to make sure that the top of the silica gel layer is completely even and horizontal. And make sure the column itself is perpendicular to the hood surface.
make sure to drain the hexane until it reaches the surface of the sand. Then, add the sample into the column using a pipette. There should be a concentrated layer of the sample just above the layer of the sand. The sample will first be eluded with the least polar solvent. When eluding, collect about 4 milliliters of the sample into individual labeled test tubes. Repeat the steps until you observe a fraction that has no pure product spot in the TLC test. Once the fractions containing the desired product are collected, combine them into a round bottom flask and isolate the product from the solvent using the rotovap again. The pure crystals isolated should look like the following. After performing the TLC test on the pure product, observe and compare the RF values with the crude sample TLC plate. When preparing for the TLC for both the crude and the pure product, be sure to have three separate vials ready with 2 to 3 milliliters of methylene chloride. Add one drop of phenyl thioacetate into the first vial and add one drop of the assigned aldehyde into the second vial. When setting up the TLC chamber, be sure to have a filter paper inside. Add 10 milliliters of the eluent inside and swirl the chamber.
After properly labeling and spotting the TLC plate, place it into the chamber carefully. You can also place two TLC plates in the same chamber to save time. Make sure the sides that are not spotted are touching. 